I'm Katie Pertik. We're going to talk about customizing some drop shadows today using the template from this weekend's crop. So here you'll see my finished page with the um, my little nugget who's sitting next to me right now in her favorite spot. And here you see the original template and what you get to start with. Um, when you grab the template. Now the template is only available for a limited time. So if you're catching this video later, the template may not be available, but you can likely find it in our store. Um, one of the things I wanted to talk about today was customizing drop shadows. Because although we offer a lot of photo frames that have built-in drop shadows, like this one here, the Vintage Photo Frames 36, has it, the shadow in it, not everything has a shadow. For instance, the butterfly, that does not come with a shadow, that it just comes plain. And maybe you don't want just a simple drop shadow on it. So I'm gonna show a couple of different ways to create a custom drop shadow. And we'll go ahead and just start with the butterfly. So if you go up to layer, and go to layer style, scroll over here and go to create layer. And I'll back up here and say, I am using Photoshop Creative Cloud. So it may be a little different on whatever application you might be using or what version. This is uh, Creative Cloud 2020. Okay, so I'm gonna go and create layer. I always seem to get this message that says some aspects cannot be reproduced and just, yeah, okay, fine. <laughs> cool. Then we've got the, it produces the shadow layer below your image layer. And you can move it around. You can see the shadow here. So you can take it just as it is. You can kind of move it down, add it, transform, and warp and pull down just maybe an edge. As you can see, to me, um, being a little uptight about my shadows, I feel like it has a very, not very harsh, but it's still a harsher line here than what I would like. I would like something a little bit more, a little softer. So I'm gonna go in and I'm going to um, command click, you can see you get the square with the dots when I hover over that um, layer in the layer palette. And I'm going to click and I get the marching ants and um, around the shadow. I don't like to see the marching ants myself, so um, command and H will hide those. I go to select, modify contract and this is just moving it in a little bit on my image. So I'm going to contract it about five pixels and then I'm going to feather it. And we're going to go for a feather of about, uh, let's say, now let's go with 10, see if that, how that works. And then select and inverse my selection. So now it's selecting this part outside and I'm going to hit delete. And then when I deselect, you can see it's a little softer than it was by just um, doing the basic create layer. So zoom back out on that. And again, transform. You could free transform. I just tend to lean towards warping because I like to pull out certain parts and you can use your um, handles here to customize it further. And it gives your image a little bit more depth, a bit more realism, depending on what you're going for. So that's a quick and easy way to start to customize your drop shot. Another option that I use frequently, and I actually can see it here in my styles, I prepare for war. So I um, prep it because I like to automate everything so I can keep my production zooming right along. So I have a new blank layer. I'm gonna set my foreground color to black. 
I'm going to command click on the butterfly layer. Again, I'm going to go up and I'm going to contract it. And we'll go from five. And then I'm going to go to select, modify, and feather. This time I'm going to go for about 15. And I'm going to go to edit, fill, fill with my, not a custom pattern, no thank you. Um, we're going to fill with my foreground color. There we go. And there it is. But you can see, we're going to zoom in again. It gave a shadow all around, and evenly all around. And that's not really what I want to work with. So again, I'm going to go to transform and warp and come down here and pull in my shadows add a little bit more of what I want to play with. Come down on the middle and then hit enter and I've got my shadow. You can see it's a little harsh. Now when we did the create shadow from the um, style sheet, you can see up here it's already at 43% because that's what my drop shadow style was set to that comes with the template. But here, when we're making our own drop shadow, it's at 100%. And you can see it's pretty harsh. You may want that harshness for depending on what kind of effect you're going for, but I generally come down into the 50s with my shadow. And I do like to keep it black, but you could do this um, same technique with a different color. Um, maybe more of a brown if you have a more warm page and you don't want just the, the gray. But that um, is a real simple way to add drop shadows. Now we're going to do the same thing again with the tag. So I'm going to just go ahead and turn off the drop shadow on the tag. I'm going to create a layer below it. Again, I'm going to go up, I'm going to modify, I'm going to contract. And then I'm going to feather, select, modify, and feather. Edit, fill, fill with my foreground color that you can see here, set to black. And deselect. Go back in, edit, transform, work. And for this one, I'm going to bring it in on the sides. So this is kind of creating more of a curled effect. And then I go over on the left and the right, and then I kind of come down on the top. So just think about you know, how things look when you actually see a paper page and how you would want the paper to be lifted up for how you go about um, choosing where you're going to pour. And I'll hit enter and adjust my fill to be about 50%. I could also move it over a little bit. Maybe I want it more to this side or that side. And then you can even, you know, just standard distorting to get it more of what you want it to be. And it's really pretty endless what you can do and the visual effects that you can create. And, and that's, you know, if you, purchase a photo frame and you want to use the unshadowed version, this is a great way to make your own shadow. So you can customize the look of the page and get the intensity of shadow that you really want to have. All right, so I probably talked pretty quick and went through that pretty quickly, but um, I hope you learned a lot from that and um, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And um, we'll be back with plenty of more things.